<laughs> he had no plans either for a hotel or anything. He was basically going to sleep on the sidewalk so that he could get tickets for the Friday night event. Mm -hmm. Didn't work out well, did, did it? No, he no, didn't. Uh, no. <laughs> All right. He didn't get there in time, so basically they camped out on the mall, and, um, that's and you were happy about that. Um, your son and your and your dummy and your thrilled. dummy husband sleeping out in the middle of Washington D.C. Yeah. at night. My nine-year-old out there was a little right. concerning. Sure, your so. husband. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I figured he could take care of himself. Yeah. Okay. So then um, the next morning, I. Um, I came uh, to the mall, that was Friday morning, and I was doing some pre-show stuff. Now, he was in trouble with you at this point, is that right? <laughs> You're in trouble? Potentially. Yes. And, um, and you called and said, hey, uh, we didn't get the tickets, but we're okay. <laughs> the next morning, um, uh, I came, and you were part of the prayer circle that I just happened to walk over to this area. Right. And I saw, and I remember seeing the two of you, um, but I don't think we spoke, did we? Maybe just said hello. Yeah. Briefly, you looked at a picture on my camera. Okay. Um, and um, <coughs> and this whole group of people, they're all strangers. Everybody was strangers, and we said a prayer together. And then later that afternoon, I came back, and my photographer, the guy who took this picture, George Lang, spotted you two. He didn't remember you from the morning, and he said, "Oh my gosh, you have to." He could see something in your eyes, and um, he said, "You have to give it to this father and son." And when I turned around and came, I recognized you from the morning, and I gave you the tickets, so you did go. Right. What is going through your head right here? I kept repeating to you, we're going, we're going, right? Yeah. yeah. When you went to 828, did you take the challenge? Did you as a family take the challenge? I think we've talked about the challenge. We haven't signed anything. Well, I know there's no. I don't know if there's, no. I don't know if there's a signature. We will have it signed later, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think what... Uh, some things that we've changed. Um, I've started praying on our, my knees uh, to put myself in the right place. People think that's, I've gotten so much mail from people saying it doesn't matter. And you know, in, in some ways it doesn't, but it yeah. does. It, what, what is the change for you? If I pray on my knees and at night when we're tucking the children in, I, I pray on my knees now by their bed. And I think it just puts me in a proper position in yeah. relationship to my Lord. And I think it also, you know, I, I, I can't tell you, our children are watching us. The tools that they need, they are learning right now. They are learning what's important and what's not, what has value and what doesn't. Our place in the world, our place in the grand scheme of things. All right, I want to talk about the sticks and I want to talk to Addison before we, we uh, end, the, um, end the broadcast tonight. So I want to go back to anybody who has found their stick. We'll go to that next. It is my firm belief that we are, we're all born for a reason and we're all in a certain place for a reason. It's whether or not we choose to do the things that we're supposed to do or not. Um, and that path always leads you to a place of peace and goodness and harmony, not to a place, uh, not to a place of uh, destruction. Um, I've asked the audience to pick up their stick. And a lot of people think, well, I don't have a stick. I don't have any role. But you do. You're in the right place with the right set of tools. And you may not even know what it is that you're supposed to do, even all the way up to your death. You'll only find out, I think, on the other side, and you'll say, oh, crap, that was it? I, I didn't do it, or why? <laughs> yeah, I did do that. I didn't know that was it. Um, Toots is up here uh, from New York. Your stick is? My stick was music. Um, about two years ago or so, I just started writing music about America. It just... Uh, you know, I'm a rock and roller from New York, and nobody in New York's right. You're from music. New York? I would have never... From the <laughs> <laughs> born and raised. And all of a sudden, I just started writing music about America. And, and the way I look at it, if my music can touch one person, yeah. and that one person tells somebody else... And, and yeah. you know, it doesn't even... Uh, you know, it, it's, um, it's really amazing, because I, I've talked to a guy who wrote the... Um, uh, the uh, biography that everybody should read. It's on Bonhoeffer. Mm -hmm. I was talking to him last week and I said, um, you know, he said, I just felt like I was supposed to write this. Now that book has influenced me. 
And so he he wrote it because he felt he was supposed to. I've I've read it because I feel it empowers me to do the things and helps me learn on the things that I'm supposed to do. And I looked at him and I said, wow, look at this book. You wrote it. I read it. And now who's out there that's really supposed to use it? What what purpose does this have? We it's not we're not the center of the universe. We're just one little piece of the puzzle. Keith, you said you found your stick or you I, I was saying that uh, what the Lord actually asked Moses was, what have you got in your hand? So I believe that we all have our sticks and that God can use whatever we have uh, for his plan and purpose whenever it is. Moses was faced with the tremendous obstacle of the Red Sea in front of him and the Egyptians behind him. What was he going to do? And God says, what have you got in your hand? And of course, it was the stick which he mm -hmm. held up. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and it's the only, because we have it in our hand already, if it was handed to us, we might think this is a sacred stick. Yeah. But because you're holding it, because it's your talent, because it's your position, because it's what you, you, you do, there's nothing special to this, this is mine. Right. That is the secret, to get over the fact that it's a stick and know that it, you, you have a divine purpose. And also that he can use whatever it is that you have Right. You said a very uh, important thing just at the beginning there where you said we were all created for a purpose and right. that's what we're going to be judged on was the yeah. purpose that we were created right. for. And this is the only time that we have uh, to do it. Does anybody else here feel like this, it, it is very clear to you? I tell my staff all the time, I hope you're keeping a journal because you are at the center of history. For, 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 for the rest of the world, uh, for the rest of time, people will look back at this time and they will try to figure out what this group of Americans were thinking because we either failed or we succeeded. And what was it that we did? What was it that we were thinking? I mean, does anybody else feel the sense of history that, that we're living right now? Good. Um, is it Alex? Yeah, Alex. Um, for my wife and I, we feel that our stick is our daughter. She's three months old, and every time we look at her, we know our perspectives have changed. We have to do, or everything that we do now, we do for her. Mm -hmm. And everything that, you know, we have to make sure what we're doing is not only the correct thing, but the right thing to do to keep our country the way it should have always been, what the founders have wanted. I, you know, I, I, I sense that I have four children myself, and I've actually, to my oldest ones, I've apologized and said, I just want you to know, no matter what anybody ever says, I didn't know. I really didn't know. I, we, we, we were just going blindly. We just, we didn't know. Um, when we come back, I, I, I want to continue that conversation just a little bit. Um, talk to Joan, and then to Addison about what the future is. Back in a second. All right. Got to move quickly. Joan, you said your stick. I believe that my stick I've discovered is my approach. I can give you an example. I was at a 9-11 protest and someone yelled out and called me a bigot. Right. All I wanted was the mosque moved from ground right. zero, nothing else. Uh, I realized at that moment when I responded in an angry way that I really needed to work on my approach and I have been doing it and I find that I can influence more people doing it that way and it's helped me. Yeah, and it's also just healthier. I mean, we're, yes. we were just talking in a break that there's, a, you don't have to win. Um, you just don't, it just don't change who you are fundamentally and anger and, and uh, all of that just changes you. It's, it's poison, it just rots you to the soul. I want to ask Addison here because I, you know, you're Addison. You're nine. Yeah. Yeah. Nine years old. Um, I said to your um, father, th you know, through radio or television, you know, bring your bring your son, um, and he did, and um, probably got in trouble with your with your mom. <laughs> and um, what will you take away from this? What what did you learn? What did you? What happened? Anything? Yeah. That I'm something smaller than, like, I'm something, I'm a, like a small portion out of a big bubble. And I'm just one part out of like a million parts. 
So in other words, the world doesn't revolve around you. Yeah. Have you, have you, uh, I mean, I was 37 before I learned <laughs> that. Um, what have you been doing with your family that's changed? Um, we really haven't been staying home a lot. <laughs> and we've been really been. Are you guys like on a circuit or something? No. Or <laughs> were you guys church going? Yeah. People, yeah. you were? Yeah. So, and you said when you got back to 828, yeah. you just put the challenge to work just through your faith. Yeah. What have you noticed, if anything, the change in faith since you already had it? Any? Yeah. Um, I've seen God take our family, my wife and I, draw us closer. I've seen um, him guide me um, in our church. I said to you during the break that when, yeah. when we got home, we looked at our spheres of influence and our relationship with God first was strong. Yeah. Our marriage was strong. Our relationship with our children was strong. So the next sphere of influence was our church family. Yeah. And there were things in our church family that we went to our pastor. We did things the proper way. We went to our pastor. We went to our elders. And that now is, is growing wonderfully. Yeah. And it's been a blessing to, this, this event has been a blessing through, through all the people who've been there. I tell you, to many. this is why, um, this is why I uh, wrote, how could this change the U.S.? It's going to change the U.S. In, in miraculous ways and faster than you might expect. It will change by starting to change you in your home, you, you with your relationship, you in your office, and it's a fire that now can't be put out. It will dramatically and profoundly change America, just as the last two Great Awakenings have in the past. Final thoughts, next. Go to glenbeck.com or foxnews.com and take the 40-day challenge. All the information is there. We'll see you again from New York. Good night, America.